Now, ketamine is not approved for treatment of depression, but it's highly utilized. And ketamine itself is an R plus S combination of enantiomers to create a racemic mixture, and that's given IV or IM, sometimes sublingual. It's not very well absorbed orally. And of course, this has been used as a rapid onset treatment for depression. And it has also been studied in the S enantiomer version intranasally. So how do these versions of ketamine work? And the short answer might be a burst of glutamate is one hypothesis. How does that happen? I thought these were blockers of glutamate. And indeed, the NMDA receptor is blocked by ketamine and S-ketamine. N-methyl aspartate. Dumb name, I know, I'm sorry, but that's what it is. It's a type of glutamate receptor. And I'm going to show you one right now. It's sitting on that purple nerve in the middle between the two orange ones. And it's on top of a little bump called a spine. And the NMDA receptor is there to receive glutamate. So the orange neuron's talking to the purple neuron at a synapse connection which has an NMDA receptor in it. And that basically glutamate is normally excitatory. Now you see it is exciting it now in the baseline as the picture's written because the orange one is exciting the purple one, but the purple one's GABA. So when GABA comes out the other end where those three little dots are, it's going to release GABA on that third nerve, which is kind of blanched out because it's turned off, it's inhibited. So that's the baseline state. Now, what happens if you take a sub-anesthetic infusion for about, you know, 90 minutes, and you block that NMDA receptor that we're showing there? Here we go, ketamine's gonna go right in there. Boop! Now glutamate can no longer excite because it's being blocked. And if the excitation of the purple neuron goes away, its inhibition downstream goes away and the opposite occurs. Here you go, and there's your burst of glutamate. So some of us think that the way ketamine works is to cause that burst of glutamate. Why do you care? Let's go find out what that's doing downstream. And what it's doing, that's the nerve, that's the glutamate's coming. You want to see, oh, there's your burst of glutamate coming out. And sitting on wherever that nerve is going is a spine. And that spine has a couple of uh, receptors sitting on top of it. On the left is an AMPA receptor for glutamate, and on the right's an NMDA receptor for glutamate. Now, normally, it goes into the AMPA receptor on the left. It causes depolarization, and then that allows the... NMDA receptor to start working, and we've described that in another lecture on glutamate involved in neurotransmission. Now, when you give an NMDA blocker and cause the burst of glutamate, well, there's, glut there's gonna be ketamine at this synapse too, and it's not gonna allow glutamate to work there, but it sure is gonna work at the AMPA receptor. So some people think that you give ketamine so you can stimulate an AMPA receptor. Why? Look what happens when you stimulate an AMPA receptor. You get depolarization. Downstream, you get these weird names, ERK, ACT, and so forth, that change and make this thing called mTOR. Why do you care? Because that signal being transduced into those molecules will make this happen, spine growth. And what you're finding is that you give ketamine, you immediately get blockade, and you immediately get spine formation, and you immediately get an antidepressant effect. So we think that the antidepressant effect could be linked to this called neuroplasticity. And in fact, if you go back to my lecture on what might be wrong in depression, one of the leading hypotheses is that neuroplasticity gets screwed up somehow by stress and other factors. 
and you lose your synapses. They atrophy and die. And so here kind of means giving them back to you. Maybe the monoamines do that, but not in everybody and not fast. So this is why ketamine is coming in because it doesn't fast and it does it in people that don't get this response or an antidepressant response from monoamines. So this is a non-monoamine, it's a glutamate action. And so there's a lot of funny things to talk about and if uh, you wanna get into it, um, some of the ways in which you make the spines grow are with growth factors. And we got a bunch of funny little things here. You can look at this in detail. But basically, brain fertilizer comes out of the synapse. What's the fertilizer? VEGF, BDNF, these are basically proteins that are growth factors. And the growth factors make synapses form. And so if your glutamate coming to the AMPA receptor causes lightning changes and it changes calcium in your ion channels, which then trigger the release of the two growth factors shown here. Boom, 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 here they come. And now there's gonna go to the growth factor receptor. And this is another detail on how we might get spine formation as a downstream but pretty immediate consequence of NMDA antagonism by ketamine. Since that was kind of more anecdotally shown, it's never been officially approved. Ketamine's approved as an anesthetic in higher doses, as you may know. The S-ketamine version of the racemate was put up your nose as an intranasal formulation, and it was approved for the treatment of depression. And we have, in a minute, I'll tell you some other drugs that work on NMDA receptors that are oral. Not approved yet, but on their way.